Hey everyone, today's Grim Dawn Basics video is going to be going over some Devotion Constellations, and I think this is going to be a multi-parter, and I'm going to kind of go over things based on the, like based on the affinity that lights up for these um, particular Devotion um, Constellations. I I can't really think of a easy way to do this without like just picking a character I have and then just looking at the constellations. I could mm, I thought about maybe like respecking a character over and over and over again, like filling things out so that everything lights up, but that would be really expensive and annoying or it would get really expensive and be really annoying to do. So, um I think I'm just gonna go with my Meteor Druid character I played in the playthrough. He has a lot of stuff revealed. It's like he has a couple things that aren't. But I think that'll be fine. And we will... We'll do our best with what we've got here. So I'm gonna start with the Primordial Constellations. So Primordial. Um, primordial beings embo embody the powers of creation, life, death, and reality itself. So the primordial abilities are sort of in the mage category of things. You'll you'll have a lot of arcanisty, shamany characters go this way. So the the low tier things for primordial um, first are tsunami, which is lightning cold. And it sort of gives you this ability where when it procs, you do this wave effect straight from you in a straight line. Tsunami is great for cold lightning characters, but Tsunami is an ability kind of drops off later on. I'll be honest, it does actually get kind of okay later on. Not great. Handy if you've got something like the Baroness Fury ability or Savagery. You can actually use it with that and it would still be pretty good because you'll have your attacks going off and then you have it assigned to a basic attack that has no cooldown and then you'll just get waves so it's pretty handy for those something like trojan sky shards wouldn't be as good um or panettes wouldn't be as good something ranged would not work as well it's it is more for like a warrior magey type of thing Another low one is the Imp, and the Imp gives you Fire and Aether, and gives you the Aether Fire ability. The Aether Fire ability is little flames on that will pop up on enemies. They have a chance to confuse targets. They deal Fire and Aether damage in a tiny, tiny radius. This is great for Albrecht's Aether Ray. This is great for anyone that's using Aether or Fire. Um, and it's also great because it gives you three Eldrick. And that will allow you to jump over and pick up things like Scholar's Light and the Hawk and then qualify for more Eldric abilities. But it also works great as a, like, as a prerequisite thing to get to the Widow or Amatok. I mean, this character's not using it for the, those purposes, but you can use it to get to the Widow. Um, just combine it with the, uh, the Hawk and you get the Widow pretty much unlocked uh, fairly instantly instantly by like five six seven eight points nine points you can get into the widow that's nothing to get up to the second tier stuff <clears throat> so uh the gallows is vitality damage chance for life leech retaliation vitality resistance and vitality damage vitality damage chaos damage the gallows also gives you five whole points into primordial so it can be used as a one point to one um, affinity point ratio in, in building up a primordial base if you need to get to higher end primordial stuff and you're using vitality damage. Um, the gallows combos really well with stuff from chaos because there's a lot of stuff for chaos that is chaos damage predictably enough and vitality damage. The lizard is a tiny bit of health regen and constitution and health. It's less good for three points, you do get four Primordial Affinity, which is a pretty good transfer of points, but um, it's it's not going to blow you away with bonus Constitution or Health. 
I considered picking it up for this character because it doesn't have a source really of additional constitution. And I mean that can be useful for your for keeping your constitution up, which will allow you to heal faster in between fights. And you know, maybe abuse constitution a bit in a boss fight or something. But yeah, uh, that's an okay one. I really like Sailor, like the Eel, by example, is three points for a better set of abilities and one more primordial affinity. So for one point, um, or for three points, you get five on the Eel, which is great. And the Eel gives you defensive ability and melee avoidance, defensive ability and projectile avoidance, and then defensive ability and pierce res. So it's actually a really nice three point, three devotion point investment. Um, it's not it's not gonna give you any like sexy uh, sexy ability like the imp or, or tsunami gives you but I mean it's actually pretty good <laughs> sailor's guide is also good for four points because you use four points and you get five affinity you get physique reduced freeze duration slow resistance cold and lightning res and then physique and most importantly out of this this little cons constellation you get movement speed Movement speed is pretty rare to get in all of these constellations. I know it's on Sailor's Guide, and I think it's on Ulzin's Torch. I think there's the only two points that give you movement speed. I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that. Um, I mean, if I'm right, quote me on it all you want. <laughs> but yeah, Sailor's Guide is another great little... Um, four points to five affinity investment if you're going for primordial stuff. So yeah, if you want 10 primordial points, you can get it for seven points. That'll like immediate, immediately unlock like the Solemn Watcher and it works towards getting these two. So yeah, great little, great little constellations right there. Um, I think that's, is that it for, I think this is the only other pure primordial thing is the Solemn Watcher. It requires 10 primordial to get into. You get physique, cold res, pierce res, percent physique and defensive ability and a percent defensive ability and reflect damage reduction so this is a good defensive tree to pick up i mean it's mostly for this percent physique and the percent defensive ability because the percent physique is health and defense and then this is just pure defense defensive ability is still not really something to invest in though so if i had five extra points with this guy i would maybe consider picking this up like he has four points i consider taking out of amatok and throwing into solemn watcher but uh yeah solemn watcher pretty nice little set of defensive abilities without an ability on like an active ability on the end oh the hound has stuff okay the hound is another small one like the eel you you invest three points into it and you get four affinity it gives you physique and then four percent health bonus to all pets and then increases your armor pierce retaliation and all retaliation and then gives you physique armor all retaliation increases your pet retaliation this is something you would pick up for a retaliation build or a pet build if you're going into more primordial stuff and then you could um like i think this would be best for a briar thorn shaman retaliation build otherwise you can use it for prerequisites but i do actually think the eel would probably be better just for meeting with prerequisites anyways so continuing on the okay the primordial ascendant combinations we'll do next and the primordial ascendant combinations are the bear and um tempest I think is it yeah the bear and tempest so the the dire bear has physical damage physique and cunning constitution and attack speed health and a reduction to stun and freeze duration physical damage and internal trauma damage and then an ability that is chance on attack will deal weapon your main hand weapon damage physical damage and has a chance to stun i would go for the dire bear for 
definitely a melee build of some kind that's using like the battle mage maybe because you could actually convert that physical damage to elemental damage but i would probably say anything that's using lots of melee attacks that is kind of physical damage based or conversion based could pick up the dire bear and get value out of it it does have this node for physical and internal trauma damage and 50 percent is not is not an insignificant bonus for those two damages so yeah maybe if you're doing an internal trauma damage character you could pick this up that's going into primordial and um and ascendant so not a bad little ability and then the tempest on the primordial and ascendant thing is lightning damage flat lightning damage more lightning damage and electrocute damage offensive ability and lightning resistance chance of additional lightning damage oh there's some more movement speed i was wrong before and then percent um electrocute with offensive ability and the reckless tempest ability which is chance on attack or chance on crit that you will have a lightning bolt strike your targets it's like the maelstrom lightning bolts and you can assign this to a lot of different things um like you can uh, that'd be pretty funny to put it on wind devil but anyways um yeah you can assign those to a couple different things but this would be definitely for a heavily lightning focused character maybe i definitely would pick up at least the first three nodes for a lightning character and then maybe stop because this like especially if you're doing like a saboteur that's doing static strike i think even Sino is using this in his build you can pick this up and add flat lightning damage to all your attacks in addition to having the percent lightning damage so um the messenger of war is another one that gives you ascendant that requires ascendant with primordial but it'll give you chaos if you complete it so messenger of war um, pierce retaliation and all retaliation. Oh, more movement speed. Man, I was way wrong on that. So physique and movement speed. Um, armor and all retaliation. Increases increased armor and pierce retaliation. Pierce resistance and damage reflection. And then the messenger of war ability, which is chance when hit by melee attacks, you will gain some movement speed, slow resistance, and have a lot of retaliation. So this is sort of a retaliation mastery ability constellation in this tree um and i and it will assign it to um, one of your passives so it's always on essentially and then i think that covers yeah that covers those so let's just grab up we'll 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 talk about the um eldritch combinations of which are just these two, the Eldritch Primordial Combinations. There's the Kraken, which requires a two-handed weapon, melee or ranged, and gives a large chunk of all damage, physical damage and attack speed, physical damage and attack speed. <laughs> Jeez, there's more movement speed. There's a lot of movement speed around here. I was way, way wrong on that. So all damage and movement speed, and then all damage and crit damage. So if you're using a two-hander, the Kraken would be a nice five-point investment that would kind of be easy to get to five eldritch five primordial is not difficult um and it unlocks chaos so if you're like doing a witchblade thing um you could actually pick up the kraken and then come down here and pick up the chaos stuff because that would unlock it for you and it's just a nice chunk of bonus so amatok spirit of winter has cold damage um health and defensive ability frostburner and offensive ability and then the blizzard ability and blizzard is great it when it procs it just hits an area with like just rain of ice um i mean it if you're building cold i would definitely shoot for amatok even a little bit of cold like this guy's mostly lightning aether but cold still helps him out and that's actually not bad because you can assign it to like wind devil and it just will proc automatically and then you can actually just spend four points to get the ability the rest of the constellation has cold damage and frostburn damage um, flat frostburn damage and percent frostburn damage and then offensive ability and cold res not big on these three nodes Because it doesn't really give you a huge benefit to completing it I would actually just pick up those three and be done with it Well, we had to awkwardly edit this thing in because I almost forgot the widow of all things so and the wraith so the wraith is <coughs> Excuse me percent percent lightning and aether damage spirit and aether res Offensive ability and energy absorption and then flat lightning aether and percent lightning aether really good if you're using either damage type um, Really great if you're using both So the widow gives you percent aether damage Energy and offensive ability percent aether damage spirit 
Vitality and Aether Res, percent lightning and Aether damage, and then the ability Arcane Bomb, which is a little bomb that sits on the battlefield and when an enemy hits it, it sort of does this little green nuke and deals a ton of lightning aether damage and then reduces offensive ability and lightning aether res. So if you're doing a lightning character, an aether character, or in my meteor druid's case, both, this ability is awesome because you'll deal more damage with your lightning slash aether um, attacks. So that is gonna cover our talk about like the mainline primordial abilities. In the next video, we're gonna go over the law section. So we're gonna kind of go through the tor the the lion and and like these up here, and then cover the the third tier abilities up here. I'll get to these things when I cover chaos. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time.